Hello, I'm Paul Michaelman, Director of Content for HarvardBusiness.org. And our guests today are David Garvin and Amy Edmondson, both professors at Harvard Business School and co-authors of the Harvard Business Review article, Is Yours a Learning Organization? Thanks to you both for joining us today. Okay, our goal for today is to help our audience understand the importance of learning in organizations and how managers at all levels can stimulate learning. So David, will you start us off by explaining what a learning organization is? Let's start with a formal definition. Learning organization is an organization skilled at two things, creating, acquiring, interpreting, transferring, and retaining knowledge. And second, acting, modifying its behavior to respond to those new knowledge and insights. So let's unpack that real quickly. First, a knowledge organization or a learning organization works with ideas. It comes up with new ideas, moves them throughout the organization, and somehow keeps them whole in policies, processes, or reviews. And second, it actually acts. It takes the new knowledge as a basis for responding to a changing environment. David's definition, I have to add, suggests the three building blocks that we talk about in our article. So there are learning processes, which the definition really emphasizes. There's also the learning environment that makes those processes possible. And as important all, over all of this is leadership that really fosters and inspires the learning processes and helps create the learning environment. Okay, so why is it so important for companies to be learning organizations? Now, there's a telling quotation from a man named Ray Stata. Stata was for many years CEO of Analog Devices, a semiconductor company. And he said, the rate at which organizations and individuals learn may well become the only sustainable competitive advantage. Products can be copied, services can be copied, even processes can be copied. Things like Six Sigma are available on the open market. But if you're learning more rapidly than the competition, you can get ahead and stay ahead. Not only that, the world is changing. We have a more global environment, industry boundaries are collapsing, previously regulated businesses are becoming deregulated, we've got new business models. If your rate of learning isn't greater than that rate of change, you're going to fall behind. So we've clearly established the value of being a learning organization. Why is it so difficult to be one? What are some of the hurdles companies need to overcome? Your question alludes to the reality that discussions of the learning organization have been around for a while. It's not a brand new idea. So David and I have put some thought into trying to understand why have these discussions not resulted in as much concrete change as we would like. And we've identified three reasons. First, many of the early discussions of the learning organization were abstract and without concrete prescriptions for action. Second, the concept was really aimed at the CEO or other members of, of the C-level executives rather than at the local leaders who are leading focused work projects, departments, divisions, business units in the organization itself, where the real critical work of the organization is done, where they can think about what do I need to do tomorrow to help my organization learn more readily. And third, there was a real lack of standards or tools with which managers could assess how well their organization was doing on being a learning organization. So our article is trying to get at all three of those barriers and make the concept more actionable and more accessible. Is there one organization that really exemplifies your ideal for a learning organization? If there's one company that meets the test of being a learning organization, it's GE. In fact, in Jack Welch's last letter to shareholders in their annual report, he said, you know, I finally realized why we're so successful. It's because we're a learning organization. They have the processes, they have the climate, and clearly they have the leadership behaviors. Different emphasis under Welch and Imhelt. Welch was more focused on audits, on processes. Imhelt's more focused on creativity and experimentation. But it's still very much the epitome of a learning organization. In your article, you describe several things that managers can do to help their teams contribute to the company's learning. Can you give us a couple examples? Well, one thing that managers can do is help their teams have a supportive learning environment. In particular, we think about the concept of psychological safety, where people perceive that the, the local social environment is one 
that is comfortable for asking questions, admitting mistakes, floating wild ideas, just trying, taking those kinds of interpersonal risks that are absolutely essential to learning. We find that that culture can't be taken for granted in most organizations, but we identify things that managers can do to improve that. For example, in a hospital that we studied called Children's Hospital in Minneapolis, the chief operating officer instituted a policy called blame-free reporting to allow people at all levels throughout the organization to speak up with their observation of, of mistakes, uh, anything they thought might not be going well, and be free from penalty or blame. So in some sense, what we're talking about is explicitly going out of their way to help people be comfortable with this, the, the very real risks that are present in the workplace today so that they can engage in the learning processes that we describe. You know, it sounds almost as if it's being nice or just being tolerant. It's actually not about being nice. On the one hand, it's about respecting other people, but it's really about being tough-minded enough to brutally confront the facts to talk directly about what works and what doesn't work. It's about being straightforward. It's not about being nice or cozy or overly friendly, but about being open. And I think about respecting each other enough to be willing to engage in that kind of openness. So what are some of the concrete practices companies can put into place? Well, a Amy set up the ground rules. You have to have a supportive learning environment, a climate that tolerates mistakes and errors. You also need concrete processes and procedures, forms for experimentation, forms for sharing knowledge and best practices, ways of reflecting on what we've learned from past experiences. Each of those are processes, systematic steps, step by step by step, where companies generate ideas, respond to new knowledge, and reflect on what they've already learned. David, that sounds awfully bureaucratic. Well, it doesn't have to be. Uh, in fact, some of the most powerful learning processes are also the simplest. Take the U.S. Army. They have a process called after-action reviews. It's a post-audit. It's a reflection on what we've learned from our experience, our mission, our project, our activity. It's organized around four simple questions. What did we set out to do? What was our objective, what we were trying to accomplish? What actually happened sets up the facts, the actual details of what went on. Why was there a difference? Often there's a gap between our objective and the reality. And the fourth question, two parts, what do we do next time? What activities do we sustain or continue? What activities do we improve or do differently? That's not at all bureaucratic. It's simply a systematic way of going about reflecting on past practice. Okay, so I'm a manager and I have bought in to this concept. I understand the need to be a learning organization, but I don't see the organization as a whole really encouraging this in a systematic way. Can I still make this happen for my group? You can. We suggest, in fact, that's the right place to start, even if you could influence the whole organization. What you need to do as a manager working within the organization is start with your group and start simply by modeling the behaviors yourself. Show curiosity, ask a lot of questions, admit when things are puzzling or not going right, acknowledge the uncertainty that's out there and invite others' input. It sounds so simple, but this is how you create, this is the leadership that creates the environment in which these more structured processes can take form. In fact, the, the, the answer to your question and Amy's response suggests this is exactly why we created the Learning Organization Survey. So that local parts of the organization, project teams, departments, divisions, groups, could assess themselves, benchmark themselves against our baseline scores, but also compare themselves to other parts of the organization. Okay, David Garvin, Amy Edmondson, thank you both very much for joining us today. Thank you. And to take the Learning Organization Survey, you can visit los.hbs.edu.